You are listening to Time Out with Coach B. I'm Steve Bittison, or as my basketball players often call me, Coach B. As a basketball coach, I might call it Time Out for several different reasons. It might be to give instruction, correct a mistake, change the way we are playing, or simply to motivate us to play harder. Isn't that what God's Word does for us? 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us that God's Word is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. That is exactly what this ministry and podcast is all about. I believe we all need to take a time out occasionally to receive instruction, correct mistakes, change the way we are going, or get motivated to play the game of life God's way. Over the course of this summer's messages, we are looking into the book of Acts, studying that first church, that church that was the most effective church in the history of the world. Our goal is to try to look past the way we've been doing church for centuries and find out what God wants us to do right now in the 21st century. Whereas in the book of Acts, thousands were joining the church every time they turned around, today, thousands upon thousands of people are dropping out of church and countless others are only marginally attending. Why is that? What made the first church so different than the church today? Those are some of the answers we want to discover in this series that we've entitled, Doing Church a New Way. But in reality, it won't be a new way at all. We are going to look at how that first church did things. So take a time out away from your busy life and join me in week six of this summer series from the book of Acts. Today's message is titled, Why the Small Group Needs to be the Center of the Church. Hello, wherever you may be and whenever you are listening to this podcast. We are right in the middle of a summer series that we've called Doing Church a New Way. But in reality, we are not really promoting that we do church a new way. We are saying that we want to do the church the old way, the way they did it back in the book of Acts. In this series, we have been pointing out that that first church, still the most dynamic and effective church in the history of the world, had a totally different model of the way that they did church than we have seen in the last millennium or so. The idea that the epicenter of the church, the hub of it all, the center that everything about the church points back to is inside four walls on a Sunday morning, is not only radically different than the first church in the book of Acts, but it also keeps the church from being that powerful entity that it once was. In this series, we are attempting to make a paradigm shift from the four walls mentality where large numbers of people come together on Sunday mornings to a model that focuses on smaller groups that brings about genuine prayer and discipleship, as well as being a light outside the four walls. You see, for centuries and getting worse each decade, the things that the first church was known for, those things that made them so dynamic, their fellowship, their love, their ministry to those in need, and their outreach and evangelism, it started to be thought of as something we do inside the four walls on a Sunday morning. Our form of evangelism and our form of reaching out to those who are hurting is to get them inside the four walls and hope and even pray that God does something there. Our form of showing love and having fellowship with other Christians are mostly seen within the confines of those four walls, the five minutes before and the five minutes after the church service. Oh, I know that there are a lot of you out there who are part of a smaller group, perhaps a home ministry or Sunday school class, and you will argue that in those smaller groups, you see those things that the first church is known for. And to a degree, you are right. I've been a part of such a small group, and it was wonderful. Until you were no longer associating with the same four walls on a Sunday morning that they were. Then it goes back to even those home ministries and small groups are an extension of the four walls. But in this series, while carefully examining the book of Acts to see how that first church operated, I have made the proposal that the modern church, the model of the church that has been in operation from the time that Constantine made Christianity the official religion and turned their pagan temples into Christian churches, has it all backwards. Instead of the four walls on a Sunday morning being the center of all church activity, the place from where everything else related to the church is born, the first church met in smaller groups in homes And from those meetings, they branched out into society for ministry. Now, if you examine the book of Acts, you will see that they were very effective in this approach. An approach that if the established church today would take, just might see the church being dynamic again. So today we're gonna look 
at the end of Acts chapter 5 and use verse 42 as a springboard to talk about what a church would look like right now if it followed the model of that first church. Let's read verse 42. And every day in the temple and the, from house to house, they continue to teach and preach the message, Jesus is the Messiah. Now keep in mind that this verse comes right on the heels of, of some pretty heavy things that the church was going through. Earlier in this chapter, we see God strike down two of their church members for lying to the church and lying to God. Now this had to send a certain amount of fear into the hearts of the rest of the church as they now knew, if they didn't know before, that this church thing was something to be taken seriously. Also in this chapter, we see several of the apostles beaten and ordered not to preach the name of Jesus anymore. This was harsh persecution, much harsher than we in the Western world in the 21st century experience. But through all of this, through the internal problems, something that as long as there are imperfect people in the church we will have, and through those external persecution, the church continued to thrive. And you know, I wonder if that first church would have used today's four walls on a Sunday morning model that we see today, would they have been so effective? Would they have continued to grow? Having a regular large group meeting on a central location might have kept people away. However, as we read in verse 42, and every day in the temple and from house to house, they continue to teach and preach this message. Jesus is the Messiah. Now I want you to keep in mind that the temple that this verse is referring to is not the same thing as the church building like we have today. The temple did not belong to the church. It was the center of the Jewish religion. It was a gathering place for the people. So in a sense, the church then would go where the people were and they would share the message of Christ. It also says that they, that they went from house to house and shared the message of Christ there. And that is what, what we need to focus on today. The meeting in the houses and why this should be the epicenter of church life. Earlier in this series, I coined the phrase that I believe should be the motto or the mission statement of, of the church. The church exists to have a presence in the community and have community in each other's presence. However, I don't know that in the traditional four walls on a Sunday morning model, we can ever truly experience both aspects of being a presence in the community and having community in each other's presence. I believe that can only fully and truly happen in the model that we see in the book of Acts. Okay, first it's important to understand that Christianity was never intended to be a solo flight. God did not put us here on earth to do church by ourselves. He wants us to be the church within a community of other people who are being the church. Now I know some of you who want to hold on to that four walls on a Sunday morning model of church will point out that because of those four walls, people are not alone. And that is true for a lot of people. But it is also true that in the four walls on a Sunday morning model, there are a lot of people who simply slip through the cracks. They show up on Sunday morning, check it off their to-do list, and never truly interact with other people. It's not always all their fault. Other people don't interact with them either. The four walls on a Sunday morning model is simply not built for that kind of interaction. On the other hand, when the church setting is in the living room of a house, then it is almost impossible to sit there and not interact with others. In the, in the traditional church model, we can go through life alone while in the midst of a large group. In the house church model, the kind seen in the book of Acts, you cannot be alone. So today I want to give you four good reasons to start thinking of the church as something that centers in the smaller groups or house churches instead of the large four walls on a Sunday morning idea. First, if the center of church life is seen in smaller groups, ones that meet together in homes, it is far easier to establish a true sense of community or fellowship than it is when you are sitting in rows of chairs within four walls on a Sunday morning surrounded by hundreds or thousands of other people looking at a man on a stage. The small group is the place where you can develop what the Bible calls friends that are closer than a brother. In the small group model, when done the right way, you will find a small community of people who will rejoice with you when something great has happened to you and cry with you during those hard and impossible times. These are the people you can call at two o'clock in the morning when your whole world seems to be falling apart. And these are the people who will want to celebrate you with you when something great is accomplished. This is the only true model of church 
that a church could actually become a family. You simply cannot do that sitting in rows, rows all facing the stage. It is way too easy to be anonymous. Second, if the center of church life is seen in smaller groups, it's easier to grow as a Christian and deepen our walk with God. Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. In a small group, we are much more likely to feel accountable in our Christian walk to those whom we regularly come in contact with than we would between four walls and a Sunday morning service. A church who primarily operates in smaller groups inside the living rooms finds it easier to challenge each other into a deeper relationship with God. It is easy to be anonymous in a large Sunday morning service, but much harder in a smaller group. Also, in the traditional pastor preaches, people listen type model, there is really no room for discussion. So many times those moments of discussion bring to light what God is truly trying to tell us. I know for a period of time when I was involved in the small group that I have often mentioned, we would discuss the Sunday morning sermon. We weren't there to tear it apart or criticize it. We never did that. We just took it deeper. To be honest, there were many times that I had sat in church and by the time it was over, I was not even sure what God was trying to tell me that day. But later in our small group discussion, it all seemed to come together and make sense. Had we not discussed it in a group, I would have never been touched by what was being preached. So part of the wonderful benefits of doing church with small groups, with that small group model, is that when done correctly, you are constantly and personally being encouraged. It's hard to stay down when those you do church with are constantly encouraging you and lifting you up. Just like it says in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, when it says, and let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. The third reason we want to talk about why small groups should be the center of the church is if the center of the church life is seen in smaller groups, then it is far easier to pray for each other's needs. As we develop community in our small group churches, we get to know each other better and truly begin to care about each other. When we do that, we want to pray for each other because what affects you also affects me. What troubles you or scares you troubles and scares me enough to pray continually for you. On the other hand, those things that causes you joy causes me joy, and I want to rejoice and celebrate with you. You simply cannot do that in the current church model. But in the home church model, it's easy to know everyone's needs and everyone knows your needs. If done the way they did it in the book of Acts, we can reasonably assume that not only did they pray together in their homes, and we're told that much, but I honestly believe when you look at the big picture of their relationships, we can assume that they didn't just pray for them and encourage them during those times they met together, but they did so also throughout the week. Now today, it's even easier to do that than they had it back then. We can call, email, or text the other person uh, throughout the week, just letting them know we're still praying for them and encouraging them in their walk. As James 5.16 says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. And finally, the fourth thing. If the center of church life is seen in smaller groups, true and genuine ministry has a greater chance of taking place. Yes, you can make the argument that the bigger the church is, the more ministries it can offer and therefore has a bigger potential to minister to more people. And I won't negate what all that can do. But that doesn't negate the power of a small group ministry. And that doesn't mean that the strength in numbers that a church can have happens when the smaller churches, the churches that meet regularly in homes, unite together. But let's look at how that first church at Acts did ministry, effective ministry, that was not centered inside the four walls of a building on a Sunday morning service. We definitely saw large crowds come to Christ during this time. And I mean large crowds. We saw earlier in Acts that in one day, 3,000 people became part of the church. So yes, there was preaching to large crowds. I guess you could kind of say that Peter's preaching on the day of Pentecost was the first evangelistic crusade, kind of like Billy Graham did for decades. But then what? What happens to those who become Christians? How are they best discipled? How do they best get plugged in? How do they best learn to see Christianity in operation? 
How do they see how Christians hold each other up in times of need? They plug into a small group just like they did in the book of Acts. Then part of the ministry of a small group or home church will be to organize outreach ministries, work the food banks in the community, help those families in the community who have lost their homes by some natural disaster. When your small group, your church family, gets together to do outreach and ministry, then it's far easier for the people in that group to buy into what they are doing and make it their own than it is when they are just one of hundreds or thousands of people being called upon to serve from their church. And those times when tragedy strikes a member of your group, no matter what kind of tragedy it is, loss of a loved one, loss of a home, loss of a job, major health crisis or family crisis, it takes only minutes to mobilize a small army of friends to come to the rescue and to be the support. That simply cannot happen if the, church, if the center of church life is within the four walls on a Sunday morning. People simply haven't formed those relationships and family bonds with each other. Oh, I know that there are people who form those bonds within those four walls, but the average churchgoer, the majority of the people, they simply don't do that. For most churchgoers, they simply do not have those family bonds within the church that automatically, without even asking for it, will have them on the phone or at your doorstep or by your hospital bed because they've grown to love you like family. That is what being the church is. But most people do not know how to be the church because all they have really truly known is how to go to church. Quite simply, if the church operated in the homes in smaller groups like it did in the book of Acts, then people cannot help but be the church. It would be part of their DNA. But sadly, most people's church DNA focuses inside the four walls on a Sunday morning, and even when they step outside those four walls, their focus is still drawn back to those four walls. So where does that leave us today? Where does that leave those of us who feel like there is something truly lacking in the four walls on a Sunday morning model that most churches are using? Now we have three choices to make, and I believe that all three of these choices will have its share of people. The first choice is to leave things the way they are. Don't rock the boat. Let the church go on doing what it has always done. Take the good parts of it and don't worry about those areas that are not quite like that first church was. Just go on being effective in whatever capacity we have been effective in. This is the easiest choice to make. We don't really have to step out on a limb or we don't really have to do anything drastic. And sadly, I think this is the choice that most people will choose. It's the easiest, it's the safest. And it doesn't cost us a thing or require any step of faith. And that is where most of you will be. That is where most of the church history has been. It's our tradition. It's part of our DNA. For others, they will choose a second choice. They don't want to change the four walls on a Sunday morning model because that is the way things have always been done. Well, maybe not always, but since the church stopped being the church that was established in the book of Acts. The people who choose this route will want to keep the four walls model as a hub of the church but they will see ways that they can tweak things here and there, what ministries they can add, what emphasis they can put on being maybe part of a small group. But they don't want to change the basic structure or the model of the church. They just want to add to it the things that will hopefully bring about more of that community that people so desperately need. And there are many, many churches out there who are trying to do exactly that. And I applaud them for their effort and their realization that, that things do need to be different. And then, there are a few who will take this knowledge and realization that if we want to be effective in our world, if we want to truly establish a sense of community, then the only way to do that is to move away from the four walls on a Sunday morning model and move towards making the homes and the small groups the epicenter of church life. By doing this, it does not mean that we have to abandon the traditions of meeting corporally inside four walls on a Sunday morning. But it does mean that the focus, the hub, the center of the church is in the smaller groups. And from there, all other ministry, including the four walls on a Sunday morning, are born. So now I ask you, I ask you first, which one of these choices do you think God would prefer the church to do? Sit back and leave things the status quo, tweak things and put a new cover on an old model, hoping to make it more effective, or completely change things up and do church a new way. The new way that is really the old way. 
the way the first church operated. What would God want from his church? And my last question I'm going to leave you with today is what are you going to do? Thank you for listening to today's podcast. I pray that you're being blessed by this ministry. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at coachbittison at aol.com or visit our website at www.timeoutwithcoachb.wordpress.com. Join us next week for the seventh week in our summer series, Doing Church a New Way. We will look at Acts chapter 7 and ask the question, when it comes to church, what do you bring to the table? You won't want to miss it. Until then, may God surround you with his love, fill you with his grace, and capture your heart.